Hello, I'm Betsy Romero from Hatari Labs, and in this tutorial, I will show you how to model a contaminant plume with Model Muse and MT3D MS. Uh, MT3D MS is a modular three dimensional transport model that can be coupled with Modflow to simulate the concentration changes of miscible contaminants in groundwater, considering different processes like advection, dispersion, diffusion, and some chemical reactions. In this tutorial, I will show you with a very simple model, uh, just so you can have a general idea uh, of how this MT3D MS can be used. Uh, here I have the model that we are going to use today. And this model, as you can see, uh, has just one layer. Also, it has a constant hydraulic conductivity I will show you, it's here. In here, in hydrology, in here, in the hydraulic conductivity, in X, it has a value of one meter per day. And as boundary conditions, it has two constant heads, these two, on each side of our grid. And the first one, if we double click here and we go to the features, we can see that it has a value of 15 meters. And the other one has a value of zero. So from this information, we can say that the flow will be moving from left to right. And with this, we can get a general idea of how the contaminant source uh, plume will be behaving. Also, we have here a well. And this well, as we can see here in the mod flow features, it has a pumping injection rate because this has a positive, uh, positive value of three. So this means that it is an injection rate instead of a pumping rate. And this is equal to three cubic meters per day. And this well will be the contaminant source that we will be considering in this model. So in order to do this, first, we need to activate MT3DMS. To do this, we go here to model, Modflow package and programs. And go here to MT3DMS. We go here to the BTN uh, transport package. And for example, here we can check first. First of all, I need to activate this. And here we can check, for example, the mass unit that will be considered for the contaminant. In this case, is milligrams. And we can also give a name to the mobile species that will be modeled. In this case, we will only have one to be modeled. And I can give it uh, any name. For example, I will just write contaminant. Mm -hmm. And also, we need to activate the advection and the disperse dispersion packages in order to consider the effects of these processes in the simulation. We won't change anything inside uh, the configuration of these two packages. We will leave everything by default. And it is also very important to select the sync and source, this package here. So I will activate it since it is the package necessary to set the well as the contaminant source. Uh, now that we are ready with MT3D MS, that everything is activated, I cl click here in OK. OK. And go back to the well. Double click in the well. And in Modflow features, here I will find the sync and source option that in this case is already activated but if in your case is if it's not activated you go here and click here like this 
by default, uh, the time has already appeared here. If in your case it doesn't, you just double click here, select from zero to uh, 365, because this model is running for one year. So it's 365 days. And here in the contaminant concentration, I will write 1000, but in this case is 1000 milligrams per cubic meter according to the uh, units I'm using in this model. I select OK. And uh, now we are ready to first run Modflow. Because uh, you before running MT3DMS, you need to run the flow model, which is Modflow. So to do this, we go here to the green arrow and save. Okay. Now it's done. We can close this. And if you want to see the, the results of the of the flow model, we can import them here. We click here in this tool, import uh, results, and I will select the FHD file, which will have the heads. I open it and I will display this as color grid by default. I only have one time and I click OK. Okay, and here it is. I can see how the head gradient is decreasing. As we said, we have the higher values around here and it's decreasing until reaching zero on the other side of the grid. And now that we have our results, uh, now it's time to run the MT3DMS. So I will go here and I will uh, deactivate this. I have to select none and click apply. I close this and now to run uh, the MT3 DMS, I click this other arrow, the one that is uh, looking downwards and choose export MT3 DMS input files. I save and it's done. I can close this and we will do the same and import the uh, these new results. I click here and import and display model results and I will choose this one. This file that has a UCN uh, type of file and it will also have the name of the a species we selected, the name I gave it, which is contaminant. I click open. And here for the MT3D, it was set to export the results of many, uh, of many steps. So along the whole year of the simulation, I will have intermediate steps. So we can see how the, the this contaminant plume is changing over time. In this case, I will click here that says select, select all data sets. So we can see how it is moving over time. And I, we will see it as color grid and click OK. okay. Okay, and this this one, this image we're seeing is the uh, final time step. We can change it here, go to this tool again, which is data visualization. And here we will have all the time steps. We have export, well, imported here. Mm -hmm. We are seeing the last time step. And now we can go, for example, to the first one, click apply. And this is our start. And if we play with these arrows, will we, will we be changing to the second time step, third time step and so on? 
and see how this contaminant plume is changing over time. Mm -hmm. Yes, until we can reach the last time. Yeah, this is the last time. Uh, this is the last time after one year. And for example, let's say that according to uh, this place regulations, maybe the maximum concentration I should have is 100 milligrams per cubic meter because I don't know if you have noticed, but if I place the the mouse over the area here, I will see the concentration. Here it's like the 1000, the maximum, because it's, it is at the source and how it is decreasing as we go to the site. So as I was mentioning, for example, let's say that according to the regulations of your country, you shouldn't have for this type of contaminant, uh, the concentration shouldn't be more than 100 milligrams per cubic meter. So I could use this uh, tab called filters and choose my uh, lower limit. So I can see the impacted area and also um, for example, measure the distance, the distance of the impact. Here I can change this lower limit to 100, let's say, and click apply. And here, this area will be defining all the concentrations that are between 100 and 1000. So we, we will know that all this area is the one that we where we will not be um, complying with the regulation. We could also use this uh, measure distance tool, measure here, and we can say that we have around 380 meters of impact from the source to uh, this right side of the source. Also, you could uh, as well export these results and delineate this area in QGIS and also get the, the exact area that the contaminant would be not complying with the regulations. So this is the end of this tutorial and I hope you have enjoyed it. And don't forget to keep on checking the Hatari Labs website because soon we will release an online course of groundwater modeling using Modflow and ModelMuse. In this course, you will learn how to build groundwater models and also apply tools like this one, MT3DMS. It will be a really interesting course. So if you like these videos, you will find it extremely helpful. Also, if you have any questions about this tutorial of or any suggestions or another tutorial you would like to see, just contact us via email or via any of our social networks and we, and we will get in touch with you. So this is it and until next time. Bye-bye.